function, right? We graph the parabola, and we have an inequality symbol, greater than, less than, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to. And we're going to be um, looking today, tomorrow, and Friday at parabolas and writing solution sets for comparing them to different values. Today, we're only going to be comparing the graph to zero, okay? Now, if I look at part A in example one, it says x squared plus 2x is greater than zero. When I say something is greater than zero, in terms of the graph, what do you think that means? Above what? The x-axis, because the x-axis is where you're equal to zero. So we're looking here at our parabola where it's above the x-axis. So here's where your color comes in, if my highlighter will load here. What do I want you to do with your color? We're going to be highlighting on the graph where the solution set is. So we said it's above the axis. So let's take our color and let's color the above the axis. All right, there's kind of two parts here. And I didn't tell you guys, I was super excited. We got new copiers at school, like brand new. Did you double punching? No, I did that. Because I, I did the wrong side. I did the wrong side. So I did the wrong side. Um, they scan and color now. So when I got it today, like all my highlighting showed up on the scan as yellow. It used to like not. So I was super excited. It's a small thing in my city. Small thing. So highlight the part of the parabola that is above the axis, right? Now how many parts of the parabola did I color that was above the axis? Two parts. So there are two parts to my solution set. Now, this is where the inequality symbol is going to come in. Other than knowing greater means above the axis. If I have a greater than symbol, what kind of dots, when I make my solution, as an, on another line, will I use? Open or close? Open. So, I'm going to give you a couple of strategies here. At the end of the day, after the notes, you don't have to do all of them. But the first one is highlighting. The second is to write your solution on the x-axis here, to treat it kind of like your number line so we can copy it down below. So here's how this works. We said open dots. So I'm going to put open dots at the x-intercept. Okay? Because that's where you're equal to zero. And we're going to use those as like our starting, our base points here. Now if I see this left portion that's above the axis, if I want to make this x-axis like my number line, would I make my number line go out to the left from that dot or out to the right from that dot? To the left. So my number line here, my axis, all the x's that are to the left of this x-intercept give me a value above the axis. Same thing with the other dot. Which way should I make my arrow from this right dot? To the right. Right? So here we have two highlighted yellow parts of my parabola. Two parts of my x-axis are um, shaded. So I want you to translate this x-axis number line down to the actual solution set number line. So we put open dots at negative 2 and 0. Those were the x-intercepts. And we had two parts where the arrows went out from these dots to reflect the yellow part up above. So that's your like visual solution set. The x values, they give you a part of the parabola above the x-axis. Now we have to think back though. We have two other ways we want to express our solution set. And you might be wondering why I'm going to make you do the solution set as a number line, set notation, and interval notation. It's because if you get to the ACT, we don't know what kind of solution they would give you, and it's all multiple choice. So you need to be able to read and understand all three notations. What is set notation? It's been a while. Yeah, the curly bracket thing. So you're going to do curly bracket here. That's where you do x and the bar. We want all the x's such that. Now we're going to write an inequality for either part of our number line. So for the left part of the number line, what inequality would you write for this little portion here? Yeah, x is less than negative 2. So you're going to put that in your curly bracket. x is less than negative 2. Now, when I have a solution that has two parts to it, my solution can be in this left part or it can be in the right part. So we're going to write the word or and then do the inequality for the right portion of my number line. What inequality is this? X is greater than zero. All right, and you close your curly bracket. That is set notation. Now I can also write that uh, answer in interval notation. 
So if you have trouble filling intervals with an infinity from these inequalities, look at your number line. The arrow on the left is heading towards negative infinity. So you'll start with a parenthesis and negative infinity. Some of us still are writing brackets with infinity. Incorrect parentheses. And then if I have an open dot at negative 2, what kind of symbol goes with negative 2? A parenthesis. Now, when I was out a week and a half or two weeks or so ago, we did some review with interval notation, and we said the word or in math is represented by what symbol? A union, a big capital U. So when we do interval notation, instead of the word or, we do the math symbol of union. That means or. There's also an and. It's upside down like that. You don't need to know that, but that's called the intersection. What'd you say? Um, that means something different. Yeah. And then what would be the interval that you'll write on the right? Parentheses, zero to infinity. All right, so that's one. First one here. Same graph now, but this time we're looking at where this parabola is less than or equal to zero. So are we above or below the axis here? Below. So take your color again. Let's color the part of the graph that is below the axis. However, my highlighter, there we go. It's giving me some trouble. So we're below the axis here. Now, did I color one part of my graph or two parts? One part. So I'm going to have one part to my number line, one inequality, and one interval. Now, when I look at this, if I have less than or equal to, what kind of dots do I put on the x-intercept? Close. So I put close dots on my x-intercept. And since I'm one section, what I color in between the dots or outside the dots? In between. So you can take that. That represents the x's that would give you a part under the graph. So we put a closed dot at negative 2. A closed dot at 0. Because it's less than or equal to. Now, when I do my set notation this time, again, I want to start with my curly bracket. I'm on all the x's such that I'm going to have one inequality because I have one part to my number line. How would you write the inequality for this part? Mm -hmm. Yep. Negative 2 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 0. I use less than or equal to because... Um, I had less than or equal to up above. And because I use closed dot and less than or equal to, what symbol do I use for interval notation? Uh, bracket. bracket. So I would do a bracket from negative 2 to 0. Do you see how this is kind of going to work for a little bit today? Let's look at an example to you. Already made the graphs. So we can go right to interpreting the equal. This time we have x squared plus 2x minus 8 is less than or equal to 0. So is that above or below the axis? Below. So shade the part below the axis. I don't know why my highlighter is. So slow. Come on. Oh, well, you can do it while I'm... I'll just use this. Use my pen. Or no, it's all frozen. We're shading underneath for less than or equal to. That's below. Again, I colored one portion of my graph. So it's that. Um, when I, or sorry, I'm backing up here. What kind of dots are going to go to my, uh, on my x-intercept? Close dots. Are you going to shade in between or outside of those dots? In between, because the green portion you can see is in between my pink closed dots. So on those x-intercepts, negative 4 and 2, I'm going to put closed dots on my number line and shade in the middle. Now again, I have one interval, or one part of my number line, so I'm going to have one interval in my set notation here. What interval, what inequality, I'm sorry, will we write here? Negative 4 is... Yes, less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 2. 
that is the set of x values that give me negative below the x-axis interval. For my interval notation, just like we did up above, because I use less than or equal to, I need to use square brackets. And my interval is from negative 4 to 2. Now you can probably guess that because we went below the axis on this one. The next graph, when it says that I'm greater than 0, means that I'm looking at the part of the axis, or the part of the graph that is above my axis. Now, back to the first part. I shaded two parts here. I have a greater than, so what kind of dot will I use? Open. And to reflect those yellow parts, what I shade in between the dots are outside of the dot. I'm going to go outside because I want two parts to my number line because I shaded two parts of my parabola. Right? If I go out, I get two portions of my number line. So I'm going to put an open dot at negative 4. And just like I did on my x-axis here, I need to make my arrow go to the left. And then at x equals 2, I put an open dot and then arrow to the right. Are we okay so far? Alright. For set notation, how many inequalities do I need to write? Two. two. What's the first inequality for the left here? X is less than negative 4. What word do I put in between? 4. And what's the other inequality? X is greater than 2. All right, we're going to make it more challenging. Oh, no. Just a little bit. Not a lot today. Tomorrow's a complex day. Today's the... Not that, it's not that bad. Interval notation. What interval do you write for the left side of the symbol line? Negative infinity to negative 4. Some parentheses or bracket. Parentheses. Union. What interval here? Yep, 2 to infinity. Okay. Now, because of kind of time constraints for today, we're going to do just flip. Oh, I'm sorry, we have a box on the bottom, and then we're going to flip our paper over. So this is the key, the key here. What key points did we need in order to write our solution set? The zero, right? The x-intercept. And what can we do algebraically to find the x-intercept? Factor. All right, so we're going to start with factor, and we might end up doing another method here, but we're going to start with factor when we flip our paper. Great. So from here on out, on the front, we grab all these points really carefully. From here on out, we're looking at sections of our graph. So the only points I care about are going to be the x-intercept. The rest of the graph does not have to be plotted perfectly. So we're going to skip to part B. So we're not going to do A right now. We're going to do B. And then tomorrow we'll do C and D together, okay? Because C and D are important, but we're not going to have time today. When I look at B, I'm going to start by not using my calculator. I'm going to graph this. I'm going to find the x-intercept by factor. So I have a negative in front. What should I do with that negative first before I factor? Factor it out. I'm going to pull out negative 1 first. And I'll get x squared minus 8x plus 10. So in order to factor here, we find my x-intercept. I would need to find two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to negative 8. Well, my only factors of 10 are 1 and 10, 2 and 5. Mm -hmm. Not quite. Does it work? No. Okay, so that means one thing. This doesn't factor. It's prime. So prime, you don't have to pull out your calculator. Just watch us here. When I factor this, that's the wrong button. Or I'm sorry, when I graph this, negative x squared, was it plus 8x? Yeah. All right. When you're prime, it can mean one of two things. It either means that you do not cross the x-axis, you have imaginary roots, or it means that you cross the x-axis, but those numbers are irrational. So let's see what our graph does. It does cross. So it means I can't factor it, but I do have actual x-intercepts. So we have to think, how else could I try to find the x-intercepts of this graph? Complete the square. Let's try it. Can I complete the square with a negative in front? No. So 
So we don't also I want to say we don't want to just graph this because we would only get approximation from the graph. We need the actual value. So first of all, I can't do complete the square with a negative. I'm going to divide negative 1 out. Remember, when we solve by complete the square, we could divide. Only when we did vertex form was when we had to factor out. So we end up with x squared minus 8x plus 10. Now, the only thing, uh, it's not a big deal, but um, I'm just going to put equal to 0 here because the inequality part doesn't matter right now until we get to the graph. Right, just to find the roots, it doesn't matter what symbol you use. So I'll just use equal. What's the next step in complete the square? Subtract 10. Okay. So I move the 10, and what do I replace the 10 with? No, well, it will be 16, but some of us need to see a plus a box there. And we are going to fill in 16. How do we get 16? Half of the middle number, which is negative 4, squared. So put 16 in both. All right. Now, the right-hand side is really nice for us. Negative 10 plus 16 is 6. And how does, what do we do with the left-hand side? Yeah, x minus 4. And I put a square. Because remember, that factors into a perfect square triangle. which is two of the same parentheses. We can connect are we okay so far with this? We're flying through a complete square. To solve, I need to get x by itself. We're not doing vertex form. So I have to take the square root. This is why we have an irrational answer. In front of the square root, what do you have to write? Plus or minus radical 6. And finally, you add 4. So it turns out that my answers, my x-intercepts, are at 4 plus or minus radical 6. No wonder we could not factor this much out. But here's the thing. We still need to sketch our graph. So we need to estimate what decibel this is. All right, we're going to use this irrational number when we write our solution set. But for the graph, we need to estimate. So let's take 4 minus radical 6, and let's see what that number is. About 1.6. So let's plot a point at 1.6 on our graph, roughly, right? That's your x-intercept. So x is about 1.6. And let's find about where the other x is. Are you guys okay with them so far? So I'm just trying to figure out the graph. So 4 plus radical 6 is about 6.4, 6.5. So that's roughly, just for the sake of making my picture, where my points are. Now I said this is a sketch, right? I don't need you to plot the other points. So all that we need once that we plot the x-intercept is to make the shape of a parabola. Is this parabola with the negative in front going to open up or down? Down. So from here, just make a parabola that's upside down through those x-intercepts. That's a sketch. All you need is the x-intercepts exactly, or here roughly x and then a sketch. Because all I need from this picture is to know what the x-intercepts are in order to find the solution. So we want to know, where is the parabola greater than or equal to zero? Which is this part of your graph. Now if I have greater than or equal to zero, what kind of dots am I going to use? Close. So I put closed dots on outer x-intercept. And do I color in the middle for this section or out? In the middle. So again, on your number line, just estimate where that would be, about 1.4 and, or 1.5, 6.4, or whatever. And shade in the middle. Now this is the only part. Now we need to use the exact answers, the 4 plus and the 4 minus radical 6, for our set notation. Okay? So here, when I write my solution, this left end point is at 4 minus radical 6. So that's the first thing when I write my inequality, I have to write 4 minus radical 6 is what symbol? Less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 4 plus radical 6. It looks yucky. I'm not going to make you do a ton of them that look like this, but it's good to see in case maybe the ACT or something has this. 
When I do interval notation, what kind of parentheses or brackets will you use? Bracket. You'll do a bracket. What's the left side of the bracket? Four minus radical six to four plus. That's the range of x. Do I follow along okay so far today? All right. So tomorrow. I All right. So let's let's look at C and D. Now C and D are going to be the same graph. So once we find the what the parabola looks like for C. We can graph that in for e. All right, so we have a negative x squared plus 4x minus 6 is less than 0. Um, we're going to start, remember, we're going to try to factor first, and then we will um, try to figure out where the roots are. Since I have a negative, I want to, when I factor, factor out a negative 1, which will be x squared minus 4x plus 6. Again, just like I said in class, you can kind of ignore the less than 0 for now, when we're just finding the x-intercept. To factor this, I need to find two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to negative 4. Well, the only factors of 6 are 1 and 6, 2 and 3. No way can I get those to be negative 4. So that means that this quadratic is prime. And like we said in class, if a quadratic is not factorable, there are only, there are two options for why it's not factorable. Either the parabola never crosses the x-axis, or it does cross the x-axis, but at irrational numbers. Like this last one we did in part B. This graph was not factorable, but it had two irrational roots. It's 4 plus or minus radical 6. So here, let's look at, complete the square again. So to start, I'm going to divide by negative 1 in every term, where I get x squared minus 4x plus 6. And again, when I do complete the square, I'm just finding the roots, so I can set this equal to 0. We'll come back to the inequality. I move the 6, and I have x squared minus 4x plus my box equals negative 6 plus the box. In the box, we take half of the middle number, which is negative 2, and square it, positive 4. And here I'm going to have my right-hand side be negative 2. You can probably see where this is going. And the left-hand side, my perfect square trinomial is going to factor into two factors of x minus 2. Well, when I take the square root of both sides, I get x minus 2 is plus or minus. Now, because I have a negative under the radical, I pull that out to be i radical 2 and add 2 to both sides. So it looks like my roots here are at 2 plus or minus i radical 2. Because I have an i, that means there are no real roots for this quadratic. It never crosses the x-axis. So what we need to do is find the vertex. You have two options here. You can either do that by hand, by graphing, or using x equals the opposite of b over 2a. Or you can use your calculator. So when we use our calculator, sorry guys, um, we're going to type negative x squared plus 4x minus 6. And graph. Now you can see this graph never crosses the x-axis, which verifies what we just did with complete the square. We have a sketch. This is, all these graphs are sketches, so we don't have to plot exact perfect points. We're just going to make the general shape. So you are free to just say, okay, I know, well, we know our y-intercept's at negative 6, but we can just make our parabola look like this. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I'm sure I might get the question, did I really have to do complete the square here when I was looking for the x-intercept? Well, one, like the last problem, if I have irrational roots, I need to do complete the square to find those so I have my solution. Here, since I didn't have roots, what you could have done to save some time is graph the parabola, see that it does not cross the x-axis, so no need to do complete the square, and go ahead and sketch the graph. If it had crossed the x-axis like the last problem, you could have gone ahead and done complete the square. All right, now, what we have in this equation to start, we need our um, number line here. If we were to find all the values of x where the quadratic is less than 0. Now remember, that means less than or underneath 
the x-axis. And when I look at my parabola, it looks like the entire parabola is underneath the x-axis. So when I make my number line on the uh, graph here, that would be any x value on that x-axis will give me a value underneath. So when I do my solution, I'm going to shade in the entire number line. Now, if you remember from earlier in this year, when I shaded in the entire number line for set notation, we would write that x was in the set, you do a little epsilon, of all real numbers. You are welcome to write that as all reals here. All right, in the set of real numbers. That means it could be anything. For interval notation, what that means is if you look at the left here, I have an arrow. That means my values go from negative infinity all the way up to positive infinity. That's any number that's real from negative infinity to positive. Now, we have the same graph that says set in D. So my parabola, again, is going to look something like this. And the question is now, where is this graph greater than or equal to zero? Well, that means where is the parabola above the x-axis? And it turns out then my parabola is never above the x-axis. So when I do my number line, I actually leave the number line blank. There's no value for x where the parabola is above the x-axis. For set notation, we're going to use our curly bracket. We want all the x's such that x is in epsilon. I'll make the epsilon a little bit better looking so you can see. We actually call that the empty set. That's a circle with a line through it. The empty set means there's no value of x. The empty set has nothing in it. Um, for interval notation, the only thing we would write here is the symbol for empty set. There um, is no interval otherwise. Okay? If you have other questions, let us know. I know A, part A on the back is not on the homework, but as long as you can factor, um, you should be okay.